So my shop is filled with some really amazing tools. And for some reason, people seem to think that I like inherited some fortune in order to buy them. The truth is I didn't. Uh, I've been working to build up this shop for the last seven years by really aggressively hunting for deals on places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and buying from auctions. Today I'm gonna to take you along while I go and buy two tools that saved me about $5,000 off of retail and are gonna help me expand my capabilities here in the shop. So I'm a big Facebook Marketplace buyer. I'm constantly on the hunt for stuff, and not just for me, I'm always looking for stuff for my friends and people that I know and stuff that I think maybe I could buy and sell and make money on. Now, because I'm always on Facebook Marketplace, I've come up on a couple of really great deals. Like my iron worker that I bought for 1500 bucks and has made me 10 times that easy. Or my giant bandsaw, which I paid about $2,100 for and now retails for closer to $9,000. So I've saved tons of money on Facebook Marketplace. And also at auctions where I got my saw stop for a thousand bucks and my big Takisawa lathe for $350. But let's talk about Facebook Marketplace. So a couple of days ago, I was scrolling through Marketplace and I came across a magnetic sheet metal break. Now, if you're familiar with those, typically the one that you're probably seeing is the one that Bailey sells. And if you follow my videos closely, you'll know that I have a Bailey magnetic break. Now, a magnetic break is an electromagnetic sheet metal break that uses six tons of downward force to allow you to bend complicated shapes in up to 16 gauge thick uh, mild steel. They're really versatile and they're kind of rare to see on the used market. This guy had it listed for $2,300, which was almost what I thought they cost brand new. So I just sort of passed it by and continued on. Well, a couple days later, I noticed he lowered the price to $1,000 and then my interest got peaked a little bit because I thought, well, I don't really need it, but a friend of mine has been looking for one. So maybe for $1,000, I'll pick it up for him and I'll ask some questions that'll maybe help me bring down the price. Now here's where some selective vocabulary can really help you. Whenever I'm gonna buy something, especially something that's electric, uh, I always ask very specific questions in order to attempt to bring down the price in the negotiation. Um, I hate negotiating on the spot. I like to get it all done out front in the messages on Facebook so that there's no confusion and there's no kind of like bad feelings if you, you know, try to lowball somebody at the last second. So the first question I asked the guy was, is it complete and why are you selling it? He told me that it was a contractor's, he hadn't used it in four years and they just needed the space. Then I asked him if it worked. He said it did, but he also said he didn't have any power to show me it worked. Now, right away, I'm thinking, well, this is a 220 volt machine, and if it doesn't power up and work, it's completely reliant on the electromagnets. And if that part doesn't function, this thing is worthless. So I was ready to hit him with a low ball offer of about maybe $700. Maybe I would have gone as low as five. But before I could do that, I hit the jackpot. He sent me a message and said, hey, I also have this. This being a 52 inch jump shear that he bought at the same time that he also didn't want. And then the deal got even better when he said you can have both for $1,000. So I looked these up and the mag break is at least 2,800 bucks and the shear ranges anywhere from 24 to 2,600 plus freight plus all that. And if they're really in good condition, I'm about to save like $5,000 by getting these two tools and I'm able to help one of my friends out and get them a magnetic break for pennies on the dollar. I paid $1,700 for my magnetic break when I bought it used and I'm about to buy one for 500 bucks. So when I'm going to pick something up like this and I know they're heavy and I know the guy doesn't have any equipment, he told me these were at his house, I always bring a couple of things. I brought my engine crane, uh, a bucket with chains and straps and hooks and different clevises and stuff so that I can load the things and a, a toolbox just in case I need to take anything apart. So I showed up at the guy's house around 9 p.m. Uh, he wasn't answering his phone and then eventually showed up and we proceeded to load the truck. The shear weighs about a thousand pounds, but the brake only weighs a couple of hundred. And it was a little hairy, but we did get them both loaded. And now it's time to unload them back at the shop. So back at the shop, all I've got to do is get these things out. And in theory, this should be easier, but for some reason it was kind of hard. It's raining and you know, it was really not that easy to do this by myself. So the first thing was to get the engine crane out. And I decided I was going to use my chain hoist to get the mag brake out. Uh, I'm parked right underneath like a beam and it should be pretty easy to lift. Unfortunately, neither of these tools have great lifting points, which I was kind of annoyed with. So basically I lifted up the magnetic brake and I didn't feel comfortable with the way it was sort of leaning. Like I felt like it could roll over. So I added a couple of straps, got it completely off my truck and then pulled my truck out from underneath it. Then once I had that thing totally clear, I could lower it back down to the ground and this thing's relatively light. I can push it around pretty easily and move it on a hand truck if I have to. 
Next is to get the shear out. And the shear weighs close to a thousand pounds, like I mentioned. Uh, but because I don't have a boom for my forklift, I'm actually going to use the engine crane again to get this out of the truck. And then I'll switch over to the forklift to move it around. It just is easier to kind of reach into the truck, pick this thing straight up, and then just pull my vehicle out from underneath it. Uh, it's relatively safe once everything's clear. And I know that at this point, if the engine crane were to fail, it would just fall on the gravel and it wouldn't kill me or anybody else. Once I had it down on the ground, I could take a look at it and give it a try. Okay, so here's some material that I know is 16 gauge mild steel. Uh, let's hope it works because it's been a lot of energy so far to get here. Didn't cut it. That's been crazy. It's been adjusted. Yeah, the blades need to be adjusted. Or they're just loose. So I think the blades need to be adjusted further down. Big cut. I can actually see that the blade was shifting out. I just think I need to tighten everything up. But it did shear, the 16 gauge. It just only cut it on the very right side. So it needs a little bit of work. Now I'm able to pull out the forklift and pick this thing up to get it out of the middle of the driveway. I've been having some problems with my forklift where my a vaporizer freezes up, so I kind of have to move fast, but you will notice that I've got chains on the front tires now, which I found help a lot. It helps me keep my traction when I have no weight on the front, and it's kept me from getting stuck ever since I put them on. I also put some new tires on, and it really, really helps me in this gravel, especially when it's soft and wet. The forklift makes easy work of picking this thing up, and I can back it in, and that's where it's going to rest for now until I have some time to bring it into the shop. Raining. Before I put this thing under the tarp, I'm going to do some work with some WD-40 brand industrial size uh, original formula and just spray this down, try to get some of the surface rust kind of broken up. And then I'm going to spray with the WD-40 specialist corrosion inhibitor. Uh, this will just keep it from getting kind of flash rusted while it's sitting under the tarp because I'm not sure when I'm going to bring it inside just yet. And this thing's pretty crusty. The most important thing is really the blade, but basically just going to spray down the whole top. So with the WD-40 Specialist Corrosion Inhibitor, this is just going to keep that flash rust because there's obviously going to be moisture underneath my tarp because it's still actively raining while I'm putting it on. Uh, but this will just help. I use this on a lot of the stuff that lives outside of my shop, which unfortunately is a few things. With the shear ready to kind of live outside for a little while, I can move the brake inside. I have a hand truck strapped to one end, and then I use my little beam carrier, which is basically just two wheels on a shaft, uh, to kind of hold up the other end so I can wheel this thing inside. It's really not that heavy, but it's just kind of cumbersome and hard to move. And because those legs are wide, I couldn't pick it up any other way. Once I had it inside, I just had to basically plug it in. It had a welder cord on it, and then I could make sure that it works. By flipping that switch and pushing the green and red buttons, I know that there's power to it, and I think this thing's going to work out great. Got to test it. Okay, here's the same piece of 16-gauge sheet metal. There you go. Oh, perfect. And then you press this button, and by continuing to press it, it breaks the magnetic pressure. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What's so cool about this is that you can just move your parts around and use different dies. Magnetic brakes like this are amazing. You can do so much cool stuff with them.
try to make that bend with a normal finger brake. And this has six tons of magnetic downward force applied. Super cool. Spraying down the rust that's on this with the WD-40 original formula just helps break it up. And then using this maroon scotch bright will just kind of wipe off the surface rust on there. There's some pretty heavy kind of pitting in the metal on this. Uh, it must have been stored wet, which is kind of annoying. But I think I can take care of it with a wire wheel. But for now, at least it won't leave any marks on any metal that I put on it. All right, so moral of the story here is I built out this shop for probably one-tenth, if not less than that of what some of my tools cost retail. And you can do that too. I got lucky on this one, but I'm not the only person that's ever gotten lucky buying stuff on Marketplace. So the moral of the story here, keep looking and don't be discouraged that tools are expensive. Also, when you see a great deal and you think there's potential to use a tool in the future, don't hesitate to buy it because even if you run out of space or you run out of money, tools hold their value incredibly well. If I turned around tomorrow and said, hey, you know what, I got to clean these tools up and get rid of them. Once I tune up that shear and clean up the mag break a little bit, I could easily triple my money and get 1500 bucks for each tool, sharing that they work, being a little more thorough in my description for selling them. And if that was my goal, I'd be making two grand. So anyway, thank you to WD-40 Brand for sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm super excited to have these tools. They're going to need a little bit of work, and I'll share a little bit more on here when I clean up the mag break, make it perfect, and also fix up that shear and, and get it cutting right. So overall, I think this was a win. I definitely think I did well on this purchase, and I'm excited to get these things kind of running and get that shear into my shop. Follow me right here on Instagram if you want to see more stuff, see what I'm doing, and follow along when I go on these kind of crazy tool picks. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, more videos in the shop, and I'll see you there. Thanks.